to look into problems with the delivery of fair and equitable service to citizens and residents. Indeed, over the last four and a half years, we've completed and published some 20 investigation reports and four annual reports. Something has struck me recently about the complaints we've been receiving, that a lot of them seem to have elements of red tape in them. So we did a search of our complaint database to discover that well over half of our complaints have some element of red tape as part of the complainant's story. That's why we're here today and why I'm announcing an investigation into red tape. Just to be clear, I'm not talking about the dismantling of rules and procedures that are necessary for the running of good government. What I'm talking about is the needless duplication or overtly complex procedures, rules, and processes that provide no benefit to the public. Red tape not only wastes time and resources, but it's also cumbersome for individuals, for small businesses, and indeed for public servants who may be hindered in doing their job. Now many people may think that red tape is a nuisance, it's not a serious problem, it's an annoyance. It's part of dealing with a large institution. This couldn't be further from the truth. Such thinking minimizes the real life experiences that residents face. <coughs> Consider the residents of Toronto Community Housing who need to move to a different unit. The forms are so complicated that staff tell them to take them to the legal clinic in order to get it properly filled out. Or think about a small business. Did you know that you can't apply for, an online, uh, for a business license online? That you have to go to only one office in the city of Toronto on Cotswold Avenue? And you may have to shut down your small business in order to go and apply and wait in line. Then you have to return with your criminal background check and queue again. Indeed, why is it relevant or necessary in some instances to have a criminal check at all? This is more than annoyance. It's more than a frustration. Red tape can be a significant barrier to the fair and equitable treatment that citizens deserve. And since this issue appears to be bigger than any one complaint or a specific part of the city, we're taking a different approach. As part of the investigation, I'm inviting residents to get in touch with us to tell us their stories of dealing with red tape. And they can do so through our website at onlistoronto.ca. As always, their communications will be kept entirely confidential. I expect to finish the fact-finding portion of this investigation by the spring. One more point. This is not, red tape is not a partisan issue. This investigation is about ensuring the residents of this city get the best possible service they can. And it's also about making it easier for public servants to do their job. It's, it frustrates residents who get lost in a thicket of rules. It hinders staff's ability to do their job. And finally, red tape is a waste of taxpayer money, a waste of taxpayer dollars. <coughs> Thank you. I'm happy to show a systemic issue. I would expect and anticipate the cooperation of the leadership of the public service to change those rules, either dismantling them or altering them to be more relevant to the needs. Do you expect to be able to that? So part of doing the job as an ombudsman is to get through the resistance and come out the other side with resolution. And I have no reason to believe the city manager won't be behind us. Based upon what you've seen so far, what part of the city organization has the reddest of red tape? Where, 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 where are the real, the, the real hot spots? Well, uh, Dave, I can't answer that specifically today because we're beginning this, but I can tell you areas uh, that have some concern in an early sense. For instance, the story uh, of a fellow owning a building uh, who was told by uh, Toronto Building to immediately dismantle a piece of its office which was in danger of hurting someone on the street. He cordoned off the area, transportation came, told them they had to get a permit to go and get scaffolding put up. He then did that, brought the cherry picker in, transportation came back and said you have to get a permit for the cherry picker. In the meantime, it was an immediate danger. That 
strikes me as something that needs looking into. There must be a central system. That's a one and done. You don't normally uh, announce the start of your investigation. Why are you doing that today? And it's a two that the army is going to Oh, n not at all. This is about inviting residents to come to our website to tell us their stories about red tape. This is a different kind of investigation, John. That's specifically why I'm inviting, I'm announcing this at the beginning. I'm not talking about the content. There's no prejudgment of outcome. I simply want to hear residents' stories. Was there a specific issue that prompted you to launch this investigation? Was there one major point that you said, okay, we need to look into this? No, I've had s concern for some time, and that's why uh, the team went back to our complaint database over the last four years to have a look and see uh, whether this was in fact a problem. And as I've said, over 50% had some element. So we now have identified certain areas, but it is important for me to be able to hear from citizens and residents, indeed small businesses as another example, about their stories, and then we'll determine how to uh, proceed with which themes. Else? Given uh, given everything that's happened around City Hall in the last uh, three weeks, has your office been uh, received any calls related to the mayor's behavior and uh, things you said? Publicly? Oh, sure, I'm sure everybody has. But my business is to do my job and look at public services and access and equitable treatment for, for residents. So, has there been any? Would there be any investigation related to the mayor's behavior and how city businesses? Th that's spend? not my mandate. My mandate is to look at public services and the treatment of citizens and that interaction. But have you received complaints from the public asking you to look into this behavior? Well, yes, of course. I'm sure that lots of lots of people have in Toronto, but that's nothing to do with me. But you specifically have been receiving concerns. There continues to be an education in the city of Toronto about what the role of the ombudsman is, what the role of the integrity commissioner is. These are these are complex offices, complex rules and legislation. We get lots of phone calls about things that have nothing to do with us. You talked about you had a run in the support administration on this last year around and uh, council rearranged your contract. When do you remind us again when that is up? Uh, well, uh, first of all, I wouldn't describe it as a run-in. I was doing my job and reporting out on an investigation. Um, they, uh, in determining whether to reappoint me for five years or not, council made a decision to extend that uh, appointment by two years, which is over in November 2015. You talk about red tape and slowing down of city business. Would you say this whole controversy surrounding the mayor has in any way slowed down any part of the city operation? It certainly hasn't slowed down. About service, about public service. So the mayor is beyond your. I have nothing to do with uh, the, the integrity commissioner. Is the person who has oversight of the code of conduct for politicians. Do you do you pass along those complaints to the? Uh, we do. There's a there's a communication that goes back and forth between accountability officers. And and you we, have? we get phone calls about financial issues, which I pass over to the to the auditor general, for example. And have you passed along? Um, probably, probably. What about the mayor's staff or uh, city hall security staff? Do they fall under your jurisdiction? All employees of the public service fall under my jurisdiction, correct? If there is a complaint from a member, from a member or group in the public about city service. Have you received complaints about city hall security in relation to uh, the Well, as you know, I don't speak about any complaints until the outcome of an investigation. Nice try, John. Thank you very much.